All right, 7.3, double angle formulas. We're going to use CAF to determine the following double angle formulas, okay? So what is a CAF? Well, let's look at this double angle. How do we get 2 theta? 2 theta is equal to sine theta plus theta. So 2 thetas is 1 theta plus another theta. We can use now the CAF rule to expand this out. And we get sine theta cos theta plus sine theta cos theta. Again, using CAF rule. What is that equal? Well, you have one sine theta cos theta plus another sine theta cos theta. That will equal two sine theta cos theta. What you've now created is the DAF rule. And that is the answer to when you have sine of two theta is automatically equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. All right, cos 2 theta is equal to cos theta plus theta. Using the CAF rule, we will get cos theta cos theta minus sine theta sine theta. Expand that out, and that will give you cos theta, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And finally, for tan 2 theta, you get tan theta plus theta and that equals, using the CAF rule, tan theta plus tan theta, 1 minus tan theta times tan theta, which gives you 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. What I want you to know is that this particular one right here can be converted to be just cosines by converting this using pi, or it can be just sines by converting this in terms of 1 minus sine squared theta. So what's important is this has multiple different versions to give you the final answer. And the beauty of this is that we have multiple possibilities. And you need to understand what possibilities will give you the answer that you're looking for. All right, let's keep moving. These are all, again, known as the DAF formula. So 2 sine theta cos theta is the simplified answer of sine 2 theta. Cos 2 theta is equal to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Or um, the other option is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Finally, the last one, this is the value for tan 2 theta. But you don't even need to know this because you could use CAF to determine those values. Let's move forwards. All right, so example number one. If you're given that cos theta is equal to negative 3 over 4 and theta is between 0 and 2 pi, what you need to do is you can find the value that you're looking for. So let me just go over this. So you need to determine the value of cos 2 theta and sine 2 theta. Well, you know that cos 2 theta is actually to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta using the DAF rule and sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta using the DAF rule. So if I know cos theta, I can automatically find the value of sine theta. We would do that knowing full well that theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Cos theta equaling a negative value is a negative in both the second and the third quadrant. Knowing that, we need to find the value of sine theta. In this quadrant, sine theta is going to be positive. In this quadrant, sine theta is going to be negative. So, find the value that we're looking for, the y value, using Pythagorean theorem. We find out that y is equal to root 7 in the positive, in the quadrant 2, and negative root 7 in quadrant 3. How does that help us? Well, we can now find the value for cos 2 theta and sine 2 theta. So sine theta is equal to root 7 over 4 in the orange the second quadrant, and sine theta is equal to negative root 7 over 4 in the third quadrant. Knowing this, we can now find those values. Cos 2 theta is going to equal the following. So we plug it in, cos theta is negative 3 over 4 squared minus root 7 over 4 squared in both the green and the 
a orange quadrant, so the second and the third quadrant. So this is the full solution that I'm going to go over with you. Over here, this is where we left off. We're going to go backwards a little bit. So this is where I left off with you. Now, how come this, this is going to be the same value in the second and third quadrant? Well, regardless if this is positive or negative, when I square it, the value will be positive. So the beauty of this is we can find the answer to this question, which is 1 eighth. Now, sine 2 theta is a little bit different because that's equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. Well, in the second quadrant, the sine 2 sine theta is, is this. 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to this in the second quadrant. And then in the third quadrant, we add a negative here, which results in a positive value over here. So these are our values for cos 2 theta. In the second and third quadrant is 1 eighth. Sine 2 theta has both a positive and a negative sign because it's in different quadrants. All right, now let's develop a formula for cosine of x over 2. This one is tricky. A lot of students think that, oh, we can use, let's say, a half plus a half. That's not necessarily true. I want you to look at the following. Cos 2 theta is equal to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's using the DAF rule. Well, how's that going to help us? Well, think of cos 2 theta. Let theta equal x over 2. So that we have, instead of 2 theta, we have 2 times x over 2. Well, that will result in cos squared of, okay, now, all of this is here. I know this is tricky. So let's go backwards. Cos squared x over 2 minus sine squared x over 2, which we're going to convert to everything in terms of cosine. So we're going to have pi here. The reason why we're going to convert everything in terms of cosine is because then all of these answers are in cosine. So 1 minus cos squared of x over 2. Why are we doing that? Because we want to find the value of cosine x over 2. So cosine of 2 times x over 2 is cosine of x. Cosine of x is equal to, now we're going to expand this out. So we're going to have cos squared minus minus, which is plus cos squared, which gives you 2 cos squared x over 2. And then we're going to have a minus 1. How does that help us? Well, folks, we're almost at cosine of x over 2. We need to find a formula for cosine of x over 2. So we're going to do that by moving the minus 1 over, and then we're going to have 2 cos squared x over 2. We're going to divide both sides by 2 and take the square root. Now we take the square root, and don't forget the plus or minus square root of this. This here is the formula for cosine of x over 2. You don't need to memorize this, but you may be asked to derive this formula as part of an application question. Let's move forwards. Find the exact value for cosine of pi over 8. So this is another question where you would have to find the exact value. Well, how do we do that? Well, cosine of x plus 1 all over 2 root is equal to cosine of x over 2. Okay, so this is what we got from the last example. So we found this in the last example. Well, cosine of x over pi over 8 is equal to, okay, cosine of pi over 4 divided by 2. Do you agree with that statement? Hopefully you agree with this. So pi over 8 is half of pi over 4. In terms of degrees, this turns out to be 22.5 degrees. Half of 45 is 22.5 degrees. So instead of the x that's here, I can replace it with pi over 4. So over here would be cosine of pi over 4 plus 1 all over 2. We're going to take the positive of that because this is in the first quadrant. So we get the positive and that will be cosine of pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2, plus 1, 
all divided by 2. Now, common denominator, and you're going to end up with this value right here. You do not need to simplify this further, because don't forget, there's a root out here with a root inside with another root. This is the final value for cosine of pi over 8. This is the exact value. You type this into your calculator, I guarantee it will not give you these values. All right, let's move forwards. You asked to find the exact value of sine of 15 degrees. So let's go and start backwards and start with the beginning. What is 15 degrees in terms of a special angle? Well, it's double of 15 gives you 30 degrees. Well, double of an angle is 1 minus sine squared times 15 minus sine of squared of 15. Where did that come from? Remember pi, cosine of a double angle, is cos squared minus sine squared. Cos squared this time I converted to 1 minus sine squared. Why did I do that? Well, because we want sine of 15. So we converted everything in terms of sine. Once we do this, we get cosine of 30 is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared 15. Okay, that is collecting like terms here. This is how I get this. But cosine of 30, we can find the actual value. That will be 1, uh, sorry, root 3 over 2 is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of 15. We want to find sine of 15. So sine we move 2 sine squared of 15 over to this side to make it positive. You get 1 minus root 3 over 2. And then we move forwards from there, and we get common denominator over here. So the common denominator is going to be 1 minus root 3, sorry, 2 minus root 3 over 2. That's the common denominator. But then I'm going to divide by 2 to bring it over. And that changes the 2 to a 4. Once I change that to a 4, I'm left with sine squared 15. I want to take the square root of the positive or negative of 2 minus root 3 over 4. We want the positive because it's sine of 15. So the answer to this is going to be either this or this if you know how to simplify it. Either way, that is the final answer of this. This is find the exact value by using a double angle. You may be asked this on a test as an application question. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Take care. Have a good night.